everyone, my name is Rebecca from The Glitch Stitchery, and today we just want to start the first and what will likely be a reasonably long series of videos about spinning yarn for socks. Specifically, I'm talking about spinning yarn for socks that do not include nylon or superwash wool. Um, it's a fairly large subject. I'll have a post linked below that has all of my research. <laughs> but basically, nylon and superwash wool are not necessarily that environmentally friendly. So I just wanted to explore some of the alternatives for spinning socks specifically, because socks have to have a very strong, sturdy, elastic yarn. So it's a little bit more complicated than just using a different wool. You have to replace the nylon and the wool. And anyway, it's a whole thing. And I'll link my research post below, which is also where I'll keep all of my videos for this organized. So today, specifically, um, I received my package from Fiber Curio, who I have bought from before for the Shave Them to Save Them initiative. Um, that is, yet again, a whole nother topic. <laughs> I'll link below to that as well. But they are, they tend to source a lot of harder to find wools. And specifically, right now, they have a Cheviot blend that they recommend for socks. So on the listing, it says it is 70% Cheviot, 20% Tussa Silk, and 10% Mohair. And that it is reliable for sock yarns because Cheviot is naturally machine washable because of its unique spiral crimp. So that... Um, that claim about naturally machine washable, that's true of a few different breeds of wool. Um, down breeds and down-like breeds tend to be fairly felt resistant or in a few cases felt proof. So those are probably going to be the ones we focus on mostly for this project. But today, <laughs> it's the Cheviot Silk Mohair Blend. So I'm going to open that up take a look. I also ordered some buttons. So I'm looking forward to seeing what those look like. Assuming the buttons are in this one. And we got Cheviot Silk Mohair. I only ordered four ounces. So we're going to spin this into a three ply yarn and then dye the yarn. I personally don't usually make socks using fingering weight yarn. Um, I like thick boot socks better. So anything from sport to worsted weight would be fine for me. I'm hoping to hit sport DK, like somewhere around there. But if it's a little thicker, I'm not going to care that much. And uh, we'll see how this goes. And before I get started on that, I do want to open up the buttons because I am excited about these. Oh, they're each individually packaged. I did not realize that. Okay, so we got four pewter sheets. I like these. And we've got, how many of these did I buy? Six, apparently. So six black and white sheeps. Oops, flip that around so you can see. Dropped one. It did not break. Good. Okay, so six black and white sheeps. And all wrapped up in here. We've got get this open without breaking anything. These ones are my favorite actually. Three black sheep.
Chevy sock yarn is done and ready to work with. I did dye it, as you can see. So it's just a really simple dye technique that I didn't feel was worth filming, but I can explain it. Basically, I took the finished yarn, skeined it up, put it in a Ziploc bag, just like this, filled the bag halfway with water, took out, well, I also added like two tablespoons of citric acid. You could use vinegar instead if you don't, white vinegar, if you don't have the citric acid. So once it was in there like that, and there was water in there, I took out my little droppers of food coloring, droppered two thirds green, one sixth yellow, one sixth blue, give or take. And I heated up the bag, well, closed the bag, heated up in the microwave, let it sit overnight. Next morning, unskein the yarn, skein it up again in a different order, put it back in the dye water because there was still a little bit of green left, heated it up again, and this is what I ended up with. So, very variegated, very fun, very, very easy, and like no mess whatsoever because all the dye is contained the entire time and there's no stock pot to clean, and, and I just reuse the plastic bags till they're unusable. So. <laughs> I can use it again for the next time I do that. There's no dye left in the bag. It didn't stain the bag or anything. All right, so yeah, I'm ready to make the socks. Now I did make a mistake. This is the weight I wanted it to be. However, I forgot to take into account that making sock yarn of this weight would take more ounces than the fingering weight one. So four ounces was not really enough yarn. Um, if I wanted to make full-size socks, I would need at least eight ounces, and I only have four. So I'm gonna have to make shorty socks and hope that the yarn lasts that long. I hope. We shall see. But I do really like how it came out, and it is not super soft, but like, if you go into the store and you look in the sock yarn section at Joann's or Michael's, they'll have um, what is it called? Peyton's Sock Yarn. No, not Peyton's. There's a type of sock yarn that you can find literally everywhere that's a wool nylon blend. And it's not particularly soft because it's for socks, so it's supposed to be strong. And this is a similar softness to that. I would say they're about equal. So, I did do the opposing ply, which makes it a tougher feeling than a standard plied yarn would be. So if you are spinning this blend and you want it to be softer, just don't do the opposing ply. It should be a lot softer that way. All right, I'm gonna get started crocheting. All right, so my Cheviot blend, slipper sock, and they didn't end up as actual socks, are done. I was right, I should have bought eight ounces, but that's okay. So what I ended up doing is this one is mostly the Cheviot blend. And I can get a pretty good idea of how it's going to wear from this. Um, my work boots are a little bit large so that I can wear thick socks with them. I kind of need the thick socks anyway because of the steel toe. So I am gonna wear these with it just to see how they wear and then I'll try washing them. We have, this one ended up with more of the, so when I was going through my stash to choose yarns to finish these off, I found the Tunis. I had spun as part of the Longway Homestead Breed Study, and I'll link to that video. And Tunis is one of the breeds that I plan on testing out for socks anyway. So this will just help me get a little bit more data for that. I did not spin it specifically for socks, so it was a little thick and it was actually a four-ply cable yarn instead of a three-ply opposing yarn, opposing ply yarn, like what I'm trying to do for socks, but that's okay. I'll, I, um, I'll still get some good data, and most of the wear is gonna be on the heel and the toe anyway. So, I'm gonna wear these, gonna wash them, we'll see what happens. Now, while I was making those, I also found my Cheviot yarn from the Long Way Home Study. Long Way. 
dead breed study. There we go. <laughs> uh, and that one was a three ply, if I remember right, but it was spun woolen or semi woolen. So it's not, again, not a sock yarn, but I was like, well, I already have the tunis going. So the original plan was to do one sock with tunis for the toe and heel, and then one with cheviot for the toe and heel, but I ran out of tunis right here, so I used some of the cheviot blend because I had a tiny bit left over, not enough to do a whole huge thing with it. But So yeah, it is. I am curious to see how these wear differently than these because this is just cheviot. It doesn't have the mohair or the silk in it. And Tunis was listed as a possibility, possi oh, I can't talk today, a possibility for socks on the save them to shave them list. So it is one that I'm gonna be studying a lot more in the future. You're going to see a whole post on Tunis and a post on Tunis Cross soon. <laughs> not, not, not this week, but soon. So yeah, I'm gonna wear each of these pairs of thick sock-ish items. They're, I don't know, they're a little slipper-like more than sock-like. That's, I'm working on it. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I'll wear each of these at least once and then I will wash them. And my next spinning for socks video, I will talk about the results then so I don't have to wait any longer to produce this video. But I think that's about it for this set. And thank you for watching. If you have any questions about the materials I used or where to find them, I have links in the description to as much as I can. And if it's not there, just leave a comment and I'll get back to you soon. Thank you.